Episode 625 Borrowing Blair's Name Blair froze. Upon closer look, it really was true. It was probably because there were many people at night, so Aaron's men did not notice that the paparazzi was following behind. Maintaining Rachel's privacy was harder now. After all, there were too many people trying to dig up her information. Blair replied, It's okay. We can handle it tomorrow. Felix asked, Blair, did you go to the Nixon residence today? Yes, Blair said. Oh, was there some event with the Nixon family? Yes. Right, now you're an important subject of the Nixon family. Blair replied speechlessly, I'm an important subject of the Nixon family? Your definition of an important subject is too shallow. Felix laughed and asked, Aren't you going to my company to discuss advertisements? See you tomorrow. Okay. Blair went back to the photo to take a look. Thankfully, the paparazzi didn't manage to take Aaron's face. They only managed to take a side view of Rachel's face. She would try to brush this off. She searched the news. Sure enough, there were reports saying that Rachel was seen attending a Nixon family dinner. It was already said that it was Old Master David Nixon's birthday, and only family members were invited to the dinner. Nobody thought that Rachel would also be there. They said that Rachel attracted the attention of many rich heirs and was simply a magnet for them. Who would have thought that she would once again be linked to a rich family? And a super right one at that. Was Rachel entering a rich family? Her fans saw the news and also began speculating. Some said that it was very normal for female celebrities to follow wealthy families. They thought that Rachel was more special, but she turned out to also be the same. Some said that yet another female celebrity was going to be a birthing machine for the wealthy. There were people who objected, too. Some said, would you guys only be happy if she found a normal family instead of a rich one? If she found a normal person, you guys should ask how he matches up to your Rachel. Some also said that if it was the Nixon family, then wasn't she with Arnold's family? Perhaps Arnold invited her to dinner since she and Arnold had a very good relationship. Do not ask blindly. This only proved that Rachel and Arnold's bond was very strong. Some also said... You must not know who Rachel works with in her studio. It's Blair, the mother of the nation. What's wrong with the nation's mother bringing her own friend along to dinner? You guys are really exaggerating this. But some were still envious and said, It is so good to be a celebrity. You get to know all these elite people. Some also said that Rachel was ultimately different from those celebrities. Looking at Rachel's list of contacts, each of them was shocking. Female celebrities were always linked to rich families, but only Rachel could be the one female celebrity coming in contact with an elite family like the Nixon family. Blair read all these and was thinking whether to reply or not. But she thought about it and continued speculating. Anyway, in a few days, these fans would find an explanation themselves. They didn't need to think anymore. The explanation from these fans could probably be the most logical. The next day, Blair told Rachel about this. Rachel listened and her head felt light. She looked at the news and was appalled. These paparazzi are really... They would even get sneaky shots of a private dinner like this? Blair said, Anyway, you should be more careful. The paparazzi are probably keeping their eyes on you now. I've already got people to get rid of some, and we have warned some of these companies. However, you're famous now, and there will be more and more people who will look at you. It's inevitable. Rachel nodded and said, I will try my best to be more careful. Blair said, Thankfully, Aaron's men are keeping watch. Their ability to tackle this is definitely stronger than others. Yes, 
Oh, right. Are we going to the advertising company today? Yes, we'll sign the agreement and leave. We have other places to go later. Some of the publicity for Witch's Diary will be published soon, so you'll still be quite busy. The two of them headed to the advertising company and went straight inside. Rachel chatted with Blair along the way. Unexpectedly, they saw Felix waiting there for Blair. Blair! He beamed and greeted her. Rachel looked at Blair strangely. Felix greeted her very intimately, which puzzled Rachel. Blair quickly introduced him to Rachel. Oh, this is my classmate I told you about. He's the young boss of this advertising company, Felix. Rachel nodded and reached her hand out. Hello. Felix looked at Rachel and was stunned for a brief moment. He thought that she looked better in person than on TV. Especially when some celebrities looked a lot plainer in reality. She was different, and indeed had a kind of subtle aura here. However, she was still only a celebrity. Felix was not interested in her. He did not know that apart from being a celebrity, Rachel was also the young madam of the Nixon family. He only focused on Blair. He smiled and said, The agreement signing is this way. After you're done, go over there and have a seat. If you're not busy, you can have a cup of coffee here. Our company's coffee is pretty good. Blair said politely, Okay, you don't have to be so formal with me. After they signed the agreement, Felix was still waiting for her. Blair could only say to Rachel, Wait for me. I'll go sit over there. Rachel nodded and nudged Blair. Don't tell me he's interested in you. Blair said, Go to hell. That's impossible. Rachel replied, It's Felix. He seems pretty impressive. Blair said, They are all young masters, but he is not even worth one finger of your young master Nixon. Go away. All right, then. That was natural. This was only an advertising firm, and Rachel also did not know many big family businesses. However, she had indeed never seen this company before. It looked like it was not a very big family business in the nation. After Rachel left, Felix led Blair to sit inside. Blair went in and immediately saw many strangers seated inside. She froze. Felix smiled and said, Oh, I, I forgot to tell you, we have some people from the board of directors here today. Are you okay with it? How could Blair say anything? She could only smile at these strangers and reply, It's fine. Felix ushered her in and introduced her to them proudly. Madam President, everybody wants to know you, but probably only very few have seen you in person. It's a coincidence that you're here today. Everybody inside immediately stood up and greeted her. Blair naturally felt uncomfortable deep down. What was Felix trying to do? Felix looked at everyone's respectful attitude and polite manners towards Blair. He smiled as he tugged Blair to sit at the head position. The members of the board of directors looked at Felix with praise. Their attitude towards him seemed to change a little. Who would have thought that Felix would know Madam President personally? Felix puffed up his chest. Yes, we're old classmates. Blair smiled. After Felix said that, he whispered beside Blair's ear, Forgive me, they are from the board of directors and I can't chase them away. Take it that you're helping me out here. Episode 626 Should take up this script? Blair could only smile and tell him it was all right. But deep down, she was already feeling unhappy. She felt that Felix was just using her. The board of directors looked at Blair, continually smiling and complimenting her. Madam President, you look a lot better in person than on TV. I watched your wedding. After that, you kept such a low profile. It is really our greatest honor for you to grace our company. It's all thanks to our Felix, 
Who would have thought that he could be classmates with Madam President? Really? Blair heard this and finally could not hold it in any longer. She said to all of them, Actually, I only came here to settle some work matters. Okay, someone is waiting for me outside. Please take your time here. I'll be on my way. Everybody immediately stood up and sent her off. Blair had to converse for a long time before she told them to stop following her. Everybody said, All right, all right, let Felix send Ma'am off. Felix followed Blair. He looked at Blair and said, Blair? Blair turned back to look at him. Felix said, I'm sorry, you must be angry. Blair adjusted her hair. No, it's just, what exactly is going on? Felix looked at Blair. I'm sorry, there's an equity war in the company and I can't win against my uncle because I'm too young. Thus, since the board of directors was here and you were coming, I suddenly thought of letting them see you. I wanted them to know that I'm not empty-handed. At least I have... Blair? I have you as my ex-classmate. I believe that you'll support me. Blair sighed and looked at him. This is actually not very useful. I'm just Edward's wife. I can't be of any help to you. Felix said, I know. I only wanted them to see you too. There will be some impact, more or less. You don't know how powerful these two words, Madam President, are. Just letting them see you is enough. How can I actually make you do something? This is just my personal matter, and I will not truly implicate you. Blair continued looking at him and said, Never mind. Since you already told me this, how can I not help you? But I hope you can give me a heads up in the future. Yes, this was also very sudden for me. I didn't know that the board of directors would be here today, really. Felix looked at Blair, who could only say plainly, It's okay. I'll be on my way then. Rachel is still waiting for me. Watching Blair leave, Felix then grunted. Behind him, his secretary sauntered over. Felix? She's so easily duped. Felix smiled. I told you that she always carried a torch for me. This kind of feeling won't disappear suddenly. Felix, you're really too impressive. Even Madam President carries a torch for you. Just wait and see. She'll help me out sooner or later. As long as I ask, she will not reject me. That's great. Felix will be unstoppable in the future. If she can help us get some business from Glazed Tile Palace, we will not lose our faces. This will take some time. Felix wrapped his arm around the secretary's waist and they walked back in together. When Blair walked out, Rachel saw that she did not look so good. She asked, what's wrong? Blair shook her head. It's nothing. I just think that Felix is different from last time. Huh? Blair sighed and felt regretful. People will change, but the more unrecognizable someone you know becomes, the worse it feels. Perhaps I'm being too sensitive. I have changed a lot, too. Why do I still care about how others change? But... Ah, he is an old classmate anyway. If he asks me for my help, I'll definitely do what I can. I just hate that he was using me without any warning. Rachel held her and asked, He made use of you? Blair told her about what happened. Rachel said, You are Madam President, after all. There are plenty of people who will want to use you. You need to slowly get used to it. Blair shrugged her shoulders. Thankfully, I don't appear in front of the public often. This Madam President is dispensable. Otherwise, who knows how much more troublesome it would be. The two of them returned to their own company. Their staff saw them and quickly delivered some documents. On the top was some gossip that just came out about Rachel. The speculations took up the headlines, and people were refreshing for updates continuously. Blair said speechlessly, 
Don't tell me that this is all intentionally done. Why is it only this news making the headlines? Rachel asked, but what's the point of doing such a thing? Nothing for now, but who knows what's going to happen next. Okay. Oh, right. We previously signed the contract with Eric's company for the cosmetics endorsement. There was a Hollywood movie looking for you. Take a look. They said that they are open to discussions. Hollywood? No way! Blair replied, It's probably because they saw that Eric hired you. It's his first time hiring an American face. These cosmetics endorsements used to always be Caucasian faces. His first American engagement must have attracted Hollywood's attention. So what should I do now? If possible, we'll send you over for the audition. Rachel looked at the name of the movie and realized that it was a remake of a recently popular novel. It was a movie about vampires. This genre was more popular overseas. Furthermore, the novel was very hot and had more influence in the country. Blair said they also probably considered that the box office in our country is more important now. If they included our nation's celebrity, their box office would be better. They believe that you have influence in the nation, so they want to see if your acting can match up. All right. Rachel looked at the type. She really had not acted this type of role before. It was a melancholic image, as before she was turned into a vampire. She was a virgin. Thus, she did not dare to interact with men. After that, it was even more tragic, as she viewed all men as her enemy. When the male lead fell in love with her, she did not dare to look into her own heart. Thus, she and the vampire hunter male lead had a love-hate relationship. This kind of dark movie was most loved by Hollywood. It tackled the weaknesses in human nature and the roles were not easy to control. Rachel said, Looks like I really need to think this through. Yes, take a look first. If you want, you can try out at the audition. Yeah, I'm afraid of getting reprimanded if I act badly. Yes, and it's your first Hollywood movie. If you act badly, even in your audition, it will affect your subsequent assignments. Episode 627 Melissa Kicked Prince to the Ground Right. This movie was a stepping stone. If it turned out well, it could open the door to Hollywood Walk of Fame for her. If she did a bad job, her road to Hollywood would end there. Rachel became nervous. Blair reassured her, Don't worry. You should be confident in your acting skills. I know it too, actually. We're in contact with Hollywood now, and I'm telling you this a bit too early. However, Eric's arrival gave you this opportunity. You should treasure it for now. Yes, since it's like this, I'll give it a shot. Anyway, worst case, I won't pass the audition. Rachel and Blair discussed the movie. Meanwhile, at Dynamic Pictures, Cassie Montana watched as the headlines went higher and higher. She grunted and asked, Rachel, are you sure that she took up a Hollywood movie? I can't confirm if she did or not, but I can confirm that they are discussing it. It's probably because Eric helped her. Anyway, there's a rumor saying that the crew wanted to pick Jennifer. However, Jennifer didn't take it up for some reason, and that is why they picked Rachel. Huh, good, good. What is up with Jennifer nowadays? Is she on her way to retirement? Did she marry into a wealthy family? Alex, her assistant, replied, No, I heard that Jennifer's boyfriend is her company's boss, President Merwin. Perhaps they are preparing to get married since they've been together for many years. Anyway, it looks like now is an important period. If Jennifer steps down, you and Rachel will be the next best options. However, the nation only has one Jennifer, and only either you or Rachel can replace her. As for the other person, she'll be crushed below. Cassie scoffed and looked at those reports. 
Because Cassie's image was affected by the previous time, she had not dared to compete with Rachel's influential power recently. However, Cassie never gave up. She was still looking out for a chance. Wasn't this situation now the big chance she had been waiting for? Rachel returned home and immediately saw Melissa sitting inside. She saw Rachel return and immediately asked, Rachel, what is happening? Why aren't the maids returning the things in my room? Are you making them play tricks on me to ostracize me? Rachel looked at Melissa. Miss Melissa, I just came home. How would I know what is going on with you? If you can't adjust to living here, you can always move out. Why hang around? Melissa laughed and quickly walked towards her. Rachel, you finally admitted it. You are trying to drive me out on purpose. Rachel looked at Melissa. You should get your facts right. I have never said that I liked you staying here. But if I really wanted to get rid of you, I wouldn't just stop the maids from cleaning your room. I would have many more methods. Why would I use such a slow tactic? You... Rachel turned around to leave, but Melissa grabbed her angrily. Rachel pushed her away, and Melissa looked at her in surprise. She lost her balance and fell to the ground. Just then, Aaron walked in. Melissa took the chance and immediately started crying. Aaron, look at her! She pushed me! She actually dared to push me! Aaron's eyes swept over her, but he walked to Rachel's side and held her. He turned to Melissa and said, Get up once you're done crying. Tears hung on Melissa's face as she looked stunned at Aaron. Aaron said, You insisted on staying here. Nobody made you. If you feel mistreated enough, you can leave. You! Aaron! How can you do this to me? Melissa, you are the one who kept pushing my limits. If you dare to lay a finger on Rachel again, I won't let you off. Hmm. <laughs> Aaron spoke and tugged Rachel along as he walked in. Melissa remained on the floor. Her lips quivered in disbelief. Aaron actually threatened her and said that he would not let her off if she laid a finger on Rachel. Ha! Huh, what a joke. This was too funny. Was Rachel that important in his eyes? She was pregnant and he did not even ask what happened. He simply sided with Rachel. When the maids walked by, they also did not look at Melissa. Melissa exclaimed angrily, What are you looking at? You're a bunch of sluts. You guys are just maids. Don't you dare look at me this way. The maids pursed their lips and could not be bothered to look at her. Melissa was furious. Just then she saw a small dog walking around with a wagging tail and fat body. Melissa narrowed her eyes. When the maids left, she grabbed the dog and tossed it to the ground. Then she held out her leg and kicked the dog. The dog yelped and curled up, whimpering. Melissa vented her anger and simply left the living room. She did not look back at the dog. Rachel looked at Aaron, who was fuming in the room. She walked to him and said, I did push her away just now but I didn't expect to push her like that. Aaron took a deep breath and turned around. He looked at Rachel. Was I so dumb in the past? Rachel froze. Why would you say that? Aaron asked, When you saw me treat Hewling nicely in the past, did you think that I was very dumb? No, not at all. Rachel put her arms around Aaron's neck. I was just envious. Why would I think that you're dumb? She sometimes thought that Aaron's gaze was really unrelenting. However, ultimately, she was still envious. She was envious that Melissa had Aaron who liked her so much. No matter how she got pregnant, he should be kinder to her. Aaron heard this and wrapped his arms around her waist. He rested his forehead against hers. You don't need to envy anyone. She looked down shyly. Yes, I don't need to anymore. 
Aaron kissed her lips quietly. Yes, I will continue treating you the best so that you won't have a chance to envy others. Her heart was filled with sweetness. He wanted to treat her even better. How great was that? She felt as if it would be too much for her. However, at this moment, Sir, Madam, a maid outside called out anxiously. The Nixon family maids were top-notch. They were trained especially professionally and would not call out like this if it was not an emergency. Rachel quickly released Aaron. When she went out, she saw that the maid was perspiring. Sir, Madam, Prince, he... he's sick. What? What happened to Prince? Upon hearing that it was Prince, Rachel hurriedly ran out. She immediately saw Prince lying in a basket and whimpering. He looked extremely weak and pitiful. Rachel was so shocked. What happened? What happened to Prince? The maid replied, When we came out, he was already lying on the ground and crying out. We quickly called for you. Rachel was so anxious that her eyes were red. Behind her, Aaron spoke. Come, let's bring him to the hospital. Rachel then thought about it and quickly turned to him. Okay, okay, let's go to the hospital. Episode 628 He Might Need Surgery Aaron immediately walked out with Rachel. Rachel carried Prince in her arms. His young and innocent face made her feel even more scared. She could only pray in her heart that nothing would happen to Prince. It was her first time having a pet, and she really did not wish for it to die in her hands. She also did not know exactly what she did wrong. Did she give something bad for Prince to eat, or what exactly happened? Why would Prince suddenly fall sick? That night, the animal hospital they frequented was suddenly surrounded by the Nixon family's personnel. Usually, Rachel would think that this was too exaggerated. Now she only wanted Prince to get better and she couldn't care less about anything else. When she entered, she ran in and said, Doctor, doctor, quickly help me out. Did our prince eat something bad? Why is he like this? The vet was inside putting on his clothes. He was already off work and only came out for emergencies. Now he suddenly heard some commotion outside and he saw that the Nixon family personnel were all outside. It seemed very urgent, and he did not dare to hesitate. He quickly put on his white coat and walked out. Prince was placed on the examination table. The vet pressed and observed as Prince continued to whimper. He sounded miserable. The vet inspected the dog, then looked up and said, We have to quickly do an x-ray and ultrasound for Prince. It looks like there might be internal bleeding. Ah, uh, how come? Rachel heard this and her heart palpitated. The vet replied, He must have had a big impact. We have to examine him first. The vet carefully brought Prince to check up. Rachel and Aaron stayed by Prince's side. Aaron put an arm around Rachel's shoulder so that she could lean on him. It's okay, it'll be fine. If it's very serious, he shouldn't be able to make a sound. No matter what, we will get him treated. Rachel leaned against him and listened to his words. Her heart seemed to calm down gradually. Aaron was a lot more observant than she was. If he said so, it must have been because he had already observed the situation. Her trust towards Aaron was already beyond the limits of her own logic. She always felt that whatever he said must be right. After a while, the vet brought Prince back. Rachel hastily asked, How is he? The vet said, There is indeed internal bleeding and we might have to operate on him now. There is a small issue with his gut area. What? An operation? Rachel really wanted to faint. He actually needed an operation. He was still so little Rachel said okay operate on him immediately but will there be any danger the vet looked at the dog's posture and already did not dare to tell any lies he could only wipe his sweat as he said all operations have risks 
especially when the dog is this small. However, if we don't do the operation, he will definitely die. Okay, I trust you, doctor. Please proceed with the operation quickly. Okay, then please take a look at the agreement and sign it. We will prepare for the surgery immediately. I'll call for my assistants and other vets right now. Rachel looked down at the agreement. Nothing was going into her head anymore. She scanned it and signed it off. If it were other people, the vet would have to remind them that the operation fees would not be cheap. This was also a major operation to a dog and it would be more troublesome. However, looking at Rachel, money did not seem like a problem to them. Thus, the vet quickly made preparations for the surgery and did not talk about the fees so that Rachel would not panic further. The entire team came down. Everyone was puzzled by the car stopped outside the entrance and the people surrounding the area. When they entered, they saw Rachel and Aaron standing there. The atmosphere was tense, and they did not dare to ask any questions. They quickly went to work. The surgery went on for two hours. Rachel and Aaron waited outside. Rachel remained silent. She worried as her thoughts ran wild. Aaron held her hands throughout and never once let go. Outsiders wanted to go in and take a look, but they saw that many guards were surrounding the place. Thus, they thought that something happened. So they took their dogs and quickly went to other vets. After two hours, the vet finally came out. He took off the mask on his face and said to Rachel, Okay, Miss Rachel, your dog's surgery was a success. Now we will have to wait until he wakes up. Rachel heaved a sigh of relief and then suddenly thought of something. She panicked again. He's not awake now? Yes, general anesthesia is more harmful to dogs. His vital signs are very good now, but he's still in a coma. We will take turns to watch over him tonight. We will see if he wakes up soon. Rachel nodded. Aaron thought that Rachel seemed rather tired and her posture was getting sloppy. He said to Rachel, I'll take you home to rest. No, I also want to stay here and watch over Prince, Rachel whined. Aaron frowned. No, go back home with me now. But I... But what? Come with me now. Rachel was still not willing, but Aaron stubbornly carried her up. You have to, even if you don't want to. Do you want to go to the hospital too, since you don't want to rest? Rachel said, I... I can rest here. The vet saw this and hurriedly said to Rachel... Miss Rachel, Mr. Nixon is also worried about you. Why don't you go home? Don't worry. We will definitely watch over your dog continuously. There's nothing you can do if you stay here anyway. Since Mr. Nixon is so worried about you, you shouldn't stay here. Rachel looked at Aaron. He did seem worried. Rachel caressed his forehead. Okay, I'll go home with you. Put me down. Aaron looked at her and said, That's a good girl. I'll have my men watch this place. Don't worry. If anything crops up, we'll be the first to know. If nothing happens, they will not disturb us. Take a good rest. When we come again tomorrow, Prince will definitely already be jumping around. Aaron glanced at the vet. The vet shivered at the sight of his icy gaze. As a doctor, he did not dare to make casual promises. However, when it came to a special client like this guy, there was really no trick he dared to use. He could only say, although we don't know how fast Prince will recover, we can assure you that he will definitely get better. Don't worry. Rachel then nodded and left with Aaron. After half a day of turmoil, they were finally home. Aaron carried the tired Rachel in. Melissa heard the commotion from inside. She pulled a maid to the side and pestered her. What happened just now? Episode 629 Someone kicked it. The maid said, Sir took Madam to get Prince treated. 
I heard they did an operation, and Madam is very worried. Sir comforted Madam just now before bringing her home. Huh, it was only a dog. It still had to go for an operation? Furthermore, Aaron personally took her? Aaron actually concerned himself with Rachel's stupid dog? Melissa thought angrily. That dog should quickly perish. This Rachel is ridiculous. It was just a small matter and she had to take up Aaron's time. Aaron was also a sucker. He went whenever she asked him to. Did Aaron treat her like a queen? Just because it was Rachel? Rachel went to rest at night. She woke up early the next morning. Aaron also usually woke up early. Seeing that Rachel wanted to go to the hospital, he quickly said, It's okay. I've already asked my people to check on Prince. He's doing very well and is already awake. It's just that he can't move around much. There are many people watching over him. Nothing will happen to him. Rachel heaved a sigh of relief. She looked at Aaron and said, Really? That's great. Aaron said, So just stay here and eat your breakfast obediently before you go to see Prince. Rachel had no choice but to nod her head and eat her breakfast. She washed up and then hurried to the hospital with Aaron. Prince was still lying there as he recovered. Although he just had an operation, dogs healed much more quickly than humans. Thus, he already looked much more energetic now. The vet said, I can only give him some injections now. He will probably be very hungry, but he is still not allowed to eat. He just needs to bear with it for a few days and he'll be fine. Rachel said, Really? There won't be any problems, right? Yes, he's recovering very well. We also gave him the best medicine. I believe he will recover even faster. Small animals may be small, but their survivability is very strong. Rachel looked at poor Prince and caressed his little paw. Poor little thing. How did it get so serious? Rachel mumbled as she thought about this. She looked up and said to Aaron, But what the hell happened? Prince was fine. How did he get internal bleeding? Aaron heard this and his brows began to furrow. The vet watched cautiously, paused and then said, Well, Miss Nixon, we have actually seen such injuries before. Many stray dogs who have been abused outside will have such injuries. Normally, it is caused by someone kicking them. If kicked in a bad spot, it could lead to internal bleeding or broken bones. But those stray dogs are not as lucky as Prince to have Miss Nixon kindly bringing them for treatment. Thus, there are many that we cannot help. We can only put them to sleep. To dogs, this is a very big setback. Rachel frowned. What you mean is that someone intentionally harmed Prince? This is only our speculation. Someone probably kicked Prince. Aaron said at the side, There are no outsiders in our house. Rachel looked up. So someone in the house did it? Aaron pressed Rachel's shoulder. Don't worry, I'll find out who did this. I won't let Prince get hurt for nothing. But how are you going to find out? Rachel asked. Aaron said, I have my ways. Whoever dares to move a muscle on our dog in this house can forget about being let off so easily. Before you hit a dog, find out who is its master. This sentence was perfectly appropriate here. Rachel nodded. Just then, Blair called and said that they were preparing for the audition. Rachel didn't want to leave Prince. She could only look at him for the time being as they reassured her numerous times that they would look after Prince and not let any harm come to him. She then left the animal hospital unwillingly. She met up with Blair. Blair saw that she looked so down and she hurriedly said, No way. What happened? You look so down. Are you going to audition? Rachel told Blair everything. Blair burst and said, No way. Judging by this, I believe Melissa did it. Otherwise, who would be so ruthless as to cause chaos in your home? 
Your maids would never do anything that would get themselves into trouble. Rachel replied, I think so too, but I can't say that to Aaron. It would look like I'm accusing her with no evidence. Blair said, But Aaron is a smart person. There's nothing we thought of that he wouldn't. So it is all the more that I can't tell him. I'll leave it to him to handle it. If I were to chase her out now, I'm afraid people will say that I'm not being magnanimous. Please, which woman would still be magnanimous when they see another woman carrying their husband's child? Even I wouldn't be magnanimous. But you know how important children are in rich families. In comparison, the wife is not as important as the child. <sighs> Isn't the child not Aaron's? But everyone still thinks that it is. Once the child is born, I can then have my evidence. For now, she will just continue growing her baby. Whether or not it is his, we will know eventually. All right, it is even better this way. If it is really not his by that time, Melissa would be getting what she deserves. She'll have to raise the kid on her own. Blair looked at Rachel and said, About today's audition. Never mind. They came all the way from abroad for the audition. If I back out now, it won't be nice. It's okay. I'll be fine. All right, it's up to you. Don't force yourself. The two of them went in. Facing them were a few foreigners. Blair specially brought an interpreter with them. The other party was very polite. They looked at Rachel and said, We saw your advertisement overseas and thought that you were very stunning. Furthermore, we heard about you, and we know that you are very popular in the nation now. It's just that we never really saw your shows. Rachel smiled and said, I graduated from a professional drama school. I believe in my professionalism. It doesn't matter if you've seen my shows or not. Anyway, every role is different, and I'll use different acting styles to perform them. At the side, one of the foreigners, who obviously did not really like her, said, To be honest, we really liked Jennifer at the beginning. I'm not sure if you know this actress. We thought that she was very suitable, be it her popularity, acting skills, or image. Did that mean that Rachel was the second best option? But Rachel was not angry. She only smiled and said, We all know Jennifer's capability. She's always been my role model, and if I'm able to be the second best choice after Sister Farron, I feel very honored. Thank you for thinking of me as the next option besides Jennifer. Hearing Rachel say this, that foreigner appreciated her more. These words were neither overbearing nor servile, and she didn't seem angry at all. It looked like her character, first and foremost, was very good. Episode 630, Get Out of My House Now! The foreigner behind them shrugged and smiled. There's no point in talking so much. Why don't you show us now? We also hope that this won't be a wasted trip. The few of them sat down. Rachel was exhausted, but she stepped into it, pinched her cheeks, and looked at herself in the mirror. Her eyes were already becoming livelier. The few of them watched from the back. When they first saw Rachel, they really felt slightly disappointed. They thought that she looked so exhausted that she was on drugs. It made them lose interest. They thought that her sunny appearance in the advertisement was merely a result of the advertisement. She was probably a very lazy person in real life. Thus, they became disinterested in her. But now they witnessed as Rachel seemed to suddenly turn into another person. She was immersed in her role and immediately came alive. Her eyes became sharp as she was filled with the emotions from the drama. That foreigner at the front was curious and sat up straight. The one behind still had doubts and wanted to see how she was going to perform. He tilted his head and watched her. Rachel looked at the script. It was one of those rather classic dramas. The woman came out from inside, thinking about her meeting with a male lead. 
The male lead admitted that he was a vampire hunter. She was devastated, but still left sassily. Outside, her coldness revealed hints. In her eyes and body that lacked warmth, she could no longer conceal the sorrow in her heart. She reached out and used her vampire superpowers to break off the wooden bridge in front of her. The changes in her eyes were very effective and clearly detailed. The foreigners watched her. It was indeed different from Hollywood acting, but it was also very natural and beautifully detailed. On top of that, these tiny emotions were expressed very well. It didn't look as artificial or deliberate as what they usually saw in dramas and movies. The foreigners stood up first and said, Very good! You're very different from what I imagined. I always thought that the actors in the nation were too exaggerated. Rachel smiled and said, I know, our acting usually goes overboard, but professional actors want to experience the character's personality so that they are in line with the original characters. When it comes to expressing our emotions, we, the nationals, are different from foreigners. When it comes to filming shows and movies for our own people to see, we naturally have our own uniqueness. But I'm a professional actor, and I want to perform for a Hollywood audience. Our performance will also change accordingly. I see. It looks like we haven't understood fully what it means to be an actor. So we have misunderstood your nation's acting style. He also turned behind to look at the other guy who thought little of Rachel. He could only smile and say, Yes, I think your acting is very good. You're as good as Jennifer. Rachel replied, Thank you. But Jennifer is the publicly acknowledged queen. I do not dare to compare with her. I can only say that she is my role model. They subsequently had a good chat, but this didn't stop Rachel from looking tired again. That foreigner asked, Are you feeling tired? Rachel said, Yes, I apologize that you have to see me like this. My dog was ill last night and had an operation. I haven't recovered from it. No, no, you're very professional. After Rachel bade farewell to them, she walked out. Unexpectedly, lights were flashing in the distance outside. Cameras followed her every step. When Rachel and Blair returned to their company, the news had already spread on the internet. It said that the media knew that Rachel was going to audition for the Hollywood film Blood today. She was auditioning for one of the female lead roles, the Vampire Queen. This movie's focus would be on the vampire hunter. Although it was a masculine movie, this female role was well-deserved. Rumors said that Blood would pick an actor from their country, so it caused a lot of commotion in the local entertainment circle. Now they finally saw Rachel go for the audition. However, after seeing how Rachel looked like after the audition, it seemed as if the result was not ideal. Judging on Rachel's past roles, everyone thought that Rachel was the best among the four newcomers. Despite this, they were still miles away from the Hollywood standard. Thus, they could understand if they didn't manage to be involved in the Hollywood movie. But speculations claimed that this role was already internally decided to be Rachel's. Whether it was Eric's doing or not, the truth was yet to be revealed. After reading this, Blair handed it to Rachel and asked, What the hell are these people doing? They are saying that it was already internally decided to be yours. Rachel read it and also laughed it off. Well, they can't follow me back to the Nixon residence and take the chance that nobody is home. They came straight to the audition venue. It has been hard on these people, too. Yes, never mind. Don't think too much. Whoever gets the role in the end is entirely up to the crew. Just because the paparazzi said that your acting skills are bad doesn't mean that they are bad. But Blair was also very exasperated. Rachel's acting was publicly acknowledged. What did they mean by it was a rumor? They made it sound like they spread it around themselves. Everybody acknowledged her. 
Rachel did not bother with this first. She only wanted to go home early and check on Prince. Meanwhile, at the Nixon residence, Aaron entered and heard the housekeeper say, They said that the last time they saw Prince, he went in the direction of Miss Melissa, but nobody saw her do anything to Prince. This... Aaron's face was extremely dark. He walked in expressionless and cold. It scared the maids at the side. Where is Melissa? His voice sounded a lot colder than he looked. Sir, uh, she is inside. Aaron brought his men with him and walked straight to Melissa's room. Since the day she moved in, Aaron had never gone close to her room. Hearing the sounds now, Melissa stood up. Seeing Aaron actually opening the door to enter, Melissa's face was filled with joy. Aaron, you're here just in time. I'm looking at the ultrasound. Do you want to take a look? The baby is getting big and we can see him. She thought that Aaron finally thought about her since Rachel was not home today. Unexpectedly, Aaron immediately said, Pack up your things today and get out of my house. The joyful smile on Melissa's face immediately fell. What did you say? Aaron said, You've been staying here for a while now. I think your arm is already healed enough. Since you're healed, isn't it time for you to leave? I... I have not. My wound is still not healed. I still want to recuperate here. Gun wounds don't heal so easily. Enough. Aaron's eyes stared at her coldly. Maybe I should be more direct. I don't need to beat around the bush with you. You wanted to stay here to recuperate, on account that you helped Rachel that one time. I've been tolerating you, but now you actually did such a thing to Prince. Episode 631 I'll make you and Aaron regret this. Melissa lifted her gaze and looked at Aaron meekly. What do you mean I did something to Prince? What are you talking about? Aaron scoffed. Are you playing dumb with me? Melissa, I'm already being extremely benevolent to you. Get out now. Of course, Melissa was not willing. She sat on the bed and grabbed the bedpost. She looked up stubbornly at Aaron. I'm not leaving over my dead body. I won't leave even if you drag me. Melissa did not believe that Aaron would really be ruthless enough to chase her out. However, Aaron only shot a look at his side. The bodyguards walked towards Melissa and simply grabbed her. Melissa immediately crumbled and wailed. Don't touch me! Nobody can touch me! Aaron! I'm not healed yet! You can't do this to me! Aaron didn't take another glance at her. He turned around silently. The bodyguards began to drag Melissa. She struggled with defiance, but was ignored. Let go of me! Aaron, I'm pregnant! What exactly do you want to do? Aaron, are you really treating me like this over a dog? Aaron scoffed. It's only now that you know who Prince is? Melissa was stumped. I... Aaron! That is only a dog. Do you really want to vent your anger on me over one dog? Aaron looked at Melissa. He said without wanting to drag this anymore, Where are the rest? Take her out. You... I'm not leaving! I'm not leaving! I finally moved into the Nixon residence! Once I got in, I never intended to leave! Melissa cried and wailed. But Aaron did not budge. Melissa really thought that she would not leave once she moved in. She spent so much effort to finally be able to move in, and now Aaron wanted to chase her out? She was not going to leave. Why should she? Aaron, why are you doing this to me? What's so good about Rachel? You've been brainwashed by her. She is just an illegitimate child. She is just an actress. You're actually treating me this way now. 
Do you think that she's some angel? She has no status, and you pamper her like a princess. Does she even deserve it? Aaron couldn't be bothered to explain to her. Neither did he want to say anything else. He turned his back on her as her voice gradually faded. As he left, she continued yelling. Aaron, you'll regret this. Are you disregarding your principles because of this woman? You used to be such a proper man. You used to be so aloof. How can you do this because of her? What right does she have? Melissa really could not understand why he doted on Rachel so much. Why did he treat Rachel much better than how he treated her? She had never experienced Aaron's warmth. Now it was all Rachel's. Why? She really couldn't understand it. However, Aaron was simply so enchanted by Rachel that he behaved so differently from when they were together. It was a totally different expression of love, and it really made Melissa feel unjust. She was jealous of Rachel. She was jealous that Rachel had everything she dreamt of. She was dragged out. Outside, the chauffeur was waiting. He looked at her and said, Miss Melissa, Mr. Nixon instructed us to send you home. No need for that. Melissa pushed him away angrily. You should get in the car, miss. We also need to send your luggage back. I said I don't want to. Melissa kicked her luggage away. I can buy new versions of all these things easily. Who cares about these? Do you think that everyone is like that wretched young madam of yours? Huh. Melissa looked inside and said hatefully, Aaron, Rachel, you guys will regret this. You'll regret this. Melissa walked out as she mumbled, Everybody will know that Rachel actually did this to me. Everybody will know that you, Aaron, fell in love with Rachel. And because of this actress, you abandoned me. You abandoned our child, and now you even chased me out because of Rachel. Aren't you guys afraid of retribution? Huh? Melissa left like that. She already made a firm resolution in her heart. She would definitely smear Rachel's name completely. She had nothing to lose now anyway. She was not afraid of anyone. Just then, Rachel was driving back home. She saw Melissa walking out and slowed down. She looked at Melissa strangely. Melissa stood there and stared viciously at Rachel. Rachel, don't think that you can relax now that you've chased me out. I just want to see how long Aaron can dote on you. He will get tired of you sooner or later, just like how he got tired of me. Rachel only repeated strangely, Chased you out? Ha! Huh, are you playing dumb with me now? I'm telling you that it's useless. I know that you are the mastermind behind everything. Just because I kicked your dog, huh? You and your dog will get chased out of this house sooner or later. When the time comes, we'll see whether you can still be this arrogant. Rachel's heart moved. Aaron already chased Melissa out like this? But if they caused such a commotion, wouldn't Melissa kick up a fuss with the Nixon family? And if she kicked up a fuss, how would everyone think of them? Rachel was used to getting insulted but she really didn't want Aaron to go through the same thing. She didn't want that at all. She headed home and saw Aaron in the living room. She quickly went over to him and said, Aaron, this... Aaron gazed at her. His eyes were still cold, but a lot more gentle. What's wrong? Is it all right? I have a feeling that she will kick up a fuss. It's okay. She can go ahead if she wants to. Anyway, no matter how much she wants to smear our names now, the truth will come to light in the future. Rachel nodded. Okay, then. You're right. The truth will come to light. However, Rachel simply couldn't bear for him to be compromised. Melissa left the Nixon residence just like that. When she returned to the Henry's family, her father looked at her and sighed. 
All right, now you've become a joke. If people find out that you were driven out, my face... It's Rachel's fault. It's all Rachel's fault, Melissa exclaimed. Her father grunted, You can't even win against this Rachel? Tell me, what else can I say to you? You were with Aaron for so long. How come Aaron never protected you this much? Now he's so protective of Rachel. Stop it! I won't let them live in peace. Melissa swiped the things on the table angrily and stormed off to her room. After that, she began spreading everywhere about how bad Rachel treated her and how she drove her out. She claimed that Rachel was not considerate of Aaron's and her child. She claimed that Rachel made things difficult for her at the Nixon residence and even ganged up with the maids at home to snub her out. Episode 632 The Rumors Were Too Ugly Melissa complained over WeChat and on the phone. She complained to just about anyone she could find. She told people, You guys have no idea. Rachel appears so nice on the outside, but she's especially evil behind closed doors. She specifically got people to play tricks on me. She appears so gracious by letting me move in with them. But then she secretly let her people attack me. I'm a pregnant lady, but she didn't even let me off. She said that she tricked me into moving in and wanted to harm my baby. She can't have kids of her own, so she doesn't want me to have a child, too. The next day, this information became uglier as it spread. As soon as Rachel woke up, Blair called her and asked, What exactly did you do? Why are people outside talking about you? Rachel said exasperatedly, What are they saying about me? I've got gossip again? It's not gossip. The maids outside are all talking about you. Huh? Rachel was completely stunned. She had no idea what had happened at all. Blair said, Yes, I told you before. This circle is not large and word spreads easily. Some small matters would spread around among the maids and caretakers much less a huge thing like this. What exactly is it? When I left just now, I heard the maid say that Melissa was kicked out of the home by the Nixon family. Yes, Aaron kicked her out yesterday. But that's not her home. That is my home. Yes, yes, but that was how Melissa said it. Furthermore, I saw through what the maids meant. That is your home, but in everyone's eyes... Melissa is carrying Aaron's child, and that means that she has a foot in the Nixon family's door. Thus, it is reasonable for her to say that she was kicked out of her home. What kind of ridiculous logic is this? Don't care so much about that. Anyway, that's what people think now. Everyone is saying that you're really ruthless to treat Melissa this way. You intentionally tricked her into moving in and wanted to get rid of her baby. You are really cunning. Ha! How come this whole situation seems so familiar? It's a bit like the palace drama that Jennifer filmed a few years back. The more Rachel heard about this, the funnier she thought it was. Blair said, Go, go, go. Who is joking around with you now? This is all real. Everyone is saying that what you did was wrong. As a madam of the Nixon family, you should be magnanimous. How can you try to get rid of your husband's child just because someone else is carrying it? This child is also the Nixon family's flesh and blood, and you should treat the baby as if it was your own. Now they all say that you're cruel and evil. Also, they said that you're not fit to be with Aaron. They said that you actually don't match up to Melissa. But you're a bit more arrogant because you get special treatment, and that is why you're so ruthless. They even said that you brainwashed Aaron because he didn't keep you in check. You must have enchanted him and tricked him. You hid your vicious heart from him, and that is why he gives in to you so much. Blair then continued, In any case, 
They are just saying that you are a wolf in sheep's skin. You snubbed out Melissa for the sake of a man, and you even eradicated her. You are the third party, but now you are executing the original. Ah! Ah! Rachel was so angry that her lungs hurt. After a long time, she then said, All right, I must really hand it to her. Melissa only just left the Nixon residence, and she already spread this much. You better be careful when you go out today. You are basically like a street rat now. Rachel stood there with the phone in her hand. She heard Blair's muted chuckle, and she said, You still have the cheek to laugh. All right, Rachel, a cornered dog will jump over the wall. That is why she would say such things about you. However, Aaron will never believe this, and he will hate her more instead. What are you worried about? What people say will sooner or later be discredited. Don't get too upset. Rachel heard this and gradually calmed down. She was indeed not that angry anymore. Yes, Aaron would never believe it anyway. He knew the truth. In that case, why did it matter what other people felt and said? In contrast, if she was really affected, that would only make Melissa happy. Rachel was still somewhat angry, but not so much anymore. Aaron already left the house early in the morning. Rachel later went out too. However, when she was outside, she saw some neighbors passing by. They saw Rachel and harbored a different interest in their eyes. Rachel didn't know many people in this circle and didn't feel much about them. Blake suddenly sent a WeChat message and asked her what exactly was going on. Rachel asked speechlessly, How did you already know? Blake didn't say anything and simply pulled her into a group chat. Rachel froze and opened to see the group chat. In the group chat were all ladies from wealthy families. They were updating each other with the latest information and discussed it nonstop. I think that Rachel did go overboard. She can be angry, but she shouldn't chase a pregnant woman out. Exactly. She was so bad to a pregnant woman. She is really mean. Rachel scrolled through the people in the group chat and then asked Blake, What are you doing? Blake replied, You asked me how I knew about it. I got my news from here. Boss, you didn't have to pull me into the group chat. Seeing it makes my blood boil. Fine, then do you want to exit it? Blake asked. Rachel thought for a while and said, Never mind, never mind. Since I'm already inside, why should I leave? Rachel looked at the group chat again. These rich princesses usually had nothing better to do. Their ability to gossip did not fare any worse than those netizens online. Rachel was insulted until no end. She stopped reading and logged off of WeChat. She headed to her company to handle other matters. Melissa looked at her own creation and listened to comforting words from people over the phone. She asked the maids at home, You guys went to check on Rachel. Did she leave the house? Yes, miss. Rachel left the house as normal. Melissa scoffed and said, How shameless. She was already insulted this much. If I were her, I'd be hiding at home and not dare to come out. She still has the cheek to step out. However, in a split second, Melissa smiled triumphantly. Never mind. It looks like she should have been upset over it and didn't want to be laughed at. Thus, she can only pretend as if nothing happened. She deserves it. I just knew it. You dare to treat me this way? Haven't you thought about how I'm handicapped now? Haven't you thought about how I'm a pregnant lady? Melissa was very happy and she continued spreading her words to people. She even told Ronnie Lancaster about this. Ronnie Lancaster was overseas. When he heard Melissa over the phone, he said quietly, You're being too ridiculous with this. Melissa said, Anyway, you have to help me spread it. I didn't tell Aaron that you stole his sperm. Otherwise, how do you think he will deal with you if he finds out? 
At the mention of this, Ronnie Lancaster didn't want to say anything more. He replied, Fine, fine, I'll help you, but I just want to tell you not to go overboard. Episode 633 Her fans started arguing. Rachel reached the company and immediately received a piece of good news. Blair said, I've just been informed by the production crew. You've been selected as the female lead for blood. Everybody thinks that you're the most suitable candidate. Rachel was so happy that she heaved a sigh of relief. Really? That's great. I finally have good news. Otherwise, I might die of depression. Blair said, it's okay. Don't get upset over that anymore. This too shall pass. I know. Blair pulled Rachel along with her and brought her to the rehearsal room behind. Come over and see this. Training has already begun for our new recruits. Rachel's interest was piqued as she followed Blair. Through the window, she could see people attending the training. Blair said, Daniel's performance is not bad. He has recently been selected for a TV drama again. This time the amount of screen time is not bad. When the filming there is done, we can go and film. Really? That's great! Rachel heard that the new recruits were pretty good. This also gave her satisfaction. Although she was a boss now, she never felt like the part until now. Seeing these new recruits hard at work, she now felt that these people were depending on her and the company. Through the window, Rachel saw that these people were very focused and hardworking. They listened as the staff talked to them and the teacher, whom Blair pulled strings to hire, taught them. They listened very intensely. But just then, someone suddenly said, Look, it's Rachel! The recruits turned their heads. Rachel looked at them. She had no choice but to open the door and walk inside. Hello, everyone. I must be interrupting you guys. No, no, Rachel, you're here. Rachel, we're having a lesson on performance. Would you like to give us a few words? Exactly, Rachel, you're so good at acting. Can you share your experience? Rachel could only walk over and say to everyone, acting indeed requires practice. In the past, many actors had pretty good skills. Now everyone thinks that many new actors can't compare to the old ones. Actually, it's because they filmed many, many shows, and at that time, the actors weren't worth a lot. Actors were just like normal working people taking average salaries. If they filmed more shows, they would be rewarded. They had to take up whatever their companies gave them. Thus, everyone could only fight hard to earn money, and they ended up filming more. Gradually, their acting improved, and so I hope you guys don't get anxious. Take it slow and study diligently. Skills cannot be passed down verbally. Sometimes, you need your own knowledge a lot more. Rachel said this and turned back to smile at the teacher. I'm just spouting nonsense. The teacher said, not at all. Your words may be rough, but they are logical. You're right, Rachel. Now you're a celebrity with good acting skills. But other stars now are really. When other actors accept shows, they would see how influential it is for their own fame. When they are filming, they would again be worried about their image. Thus, during filming, they would keep too much of their own image and they will easily not fit the scripted image. This is really not good. Rachel smiled and said, All right, all of you have heard this, right? I hope that our company can walk the path of placing skills first. I hope everyone can understand that only skills can support us until the end. If you become famous without any skills, you can only be famous for so long, right? Everyone immediately applauded and praised her. Rachel, we know. We want to learn from Rachel and place acting skills as a priority. This is how we can be famous for so long like you. Furthermore, you'll continue being famous. Exactly. 
I used to think Cassie was so great, but now she has been so quiet. Yes, she can't win over our Rachel at all. Her acting is so bad and she still wanted to compete with Rachel for roles. Rachel was speechless. She did not expect them to go there. She quickly said, No, no. Actually, Cassie and I do not walk on the same path. It's just the media that always puts us together. Blair politely told everyone to resume training and she took Rachel away. Rachel said, Their compliments are really... Blair chuckled and said, Of course. You're a big tree now and many people hope to stay under your lucky shade. Stop it. Really? You're now not only a celebrity, but also their boss. Of course they will listen to you, just like how you first entered the workplace yourself. You must have also thought that people like Courtney Helms spoke very logically and impressively. You would have wanted to suck up to her and be recommended by her. Now this is exactly how they're looking at you. Rachel thought about it. She was indeed like this back then. It was just that she didn't expect them to think that way about her now. Thus, she now gave the same mighty feeling that Song Shahei gave her back then. All right, she really couldn't get used to it. The two of them chatted and laughed as they headed back. While they were still in high spirits, another piece of news once again suddenly surfaced. Sister Yu, I just saw the news online. They already posted about Rachel getting selected for the role. Blair asked, Really? The news got out fast. We haven't released a statement, have we? It wasn't us. Someone else leaked it out. Blair waved her hand in acknowledgement and then looked at the news on her computer. As usual, there were many news articles in front, but there was one at the back that stood out. Someone said, Rachel is really the number one in acting in our country now. She is unrivaled. Who said that Cassie was great? Rachel is already more famous now. Among the four newcomers back then, only Rachel is still so popular. Two of them never became famous and expired just like that. Blair scrolled through the comments below. Some agreed and said, Rachel's presence is apparent and others can't do the same. Cassie went to the sidelines a long time ago and Jennifer is too old for anything. Rachel is definitely more popular than Jennifer now. Otherwise, why would the Hollywood crew call up Rachel and not Jennifer? Of course, they want to get the best female star in our country so that they can earn more for their box office. Rachel's fans saw these and were naturally happy. They immediately spread it around. That is right. Of course our Rachel's acting is good. Rachel's skills are apparent. The mighty Rachel will be heading towards Hollywood. The screen time for the female lead in Blood is considered plenty in Hollywood. Furthermore, it's the role of the Vampire Queen. She is fantastic. However, there were some who immediately disagreed. A fan of Cassie said, Who are you calling expired? Don't drag others down when you're praising your Rachel. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.